It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yes! But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It's the Finish Strong Friday, presented by DraftKings. Love me some DraftKings. Love me some Greg Cosell. Greg Cosell finally opening up the back door, so to speak, and pulling back the curtain and letting all of you, yes, including you, know exactly how he goes about his film watching. Cannot wait to talk to Professor Costell momentarily. However, this is very important. This is the last show of the week. You can check out the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, College Draft, we had Jeremy Chin and Kyle Juszczyk on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. But this is a Finish Strong Friday, and this is a Winner's Friday. I want winners. I want people that want to win. So do I, Mike Singletary. I want people like Evan Lasik. Evan Gave us a like on Instagram. Thank you, Evan. Hit me up, Ross at RossTucker.com. Let me know what you want, man. I, I got what you need, bro. I got a signed picture, a signed press pass, a signed card. All you got to do is email me, Ross at RossTucker.com. Let me know what you want. I got it. The sponsor confirmation email winner, David King. He took advantage of the Manscaped offer. Way back in the day. Yeah, I keep track. I have a whole folder of sponsor confirmation email contestants like David King. Boom. Speaking of contestants, we will have new best ball contestants for the Fantasy Feast. DraftKings best ball starting next week. So start to get your entries in now and then we've got the youtube shout out youtube.com slash ross tucker nfl that shout out goes to kirk smith kirk thank you for number one subscribing and number two going ahead and commenting over at youtube.com slash ross tucker nfl the patron Shout out, patreon.com slash RT Media. Jason Pierce, love Jason Pierce, love our patrons, and love Greg Cosell. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, Greg, I've been looking forward to this one. So over the last eight weeks, we got your preview, thoughts, breakdown, whatever you want to call it of every single division in the NFL. Highly encourage everybody to check those out. They're always available on whatever podcast platform you use. You can also always check them out visually over at youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. But it occurred to me, Greg, and we should probably do this every year. (laughs) We don't really talk about your process. Like, The listeners love you. We get tremendous feedback, you know, whether it's the YouTube comments or emails, or even when I meet people at the Jersey Shore, I love Greg Cosell days. I love whatever, right? It's awesome. (laughs) They love listening to you, the professor of professional football, but we don't really talk about your process. So in my mind, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's sort of two different things. There's Breaking down a player, such as a college player right. or a quarterback or whatever it is. And then there's breaking down teams, schemes, and really what you do on the NFL matchup show, which is looking at one team and schemes, another team and schemes, and then thinking about how those may work together, come together for a game. So I was kind of hoping you could – you know, peel back the curtain a little bit today and give our listeners and viewers a a little snippet of sort of what your process is when you are going to go ahead and evaluate one way or the other. So we can start with the college players and get that out of the way because that's, you know, 
not something we're doing as much this time of year, or at least I'm not talking to you as much about it <laughs> this time of year. You probably are doing it. It's probably a good time for you to get ahead on some of these guys. But a given college player, Greg, okay, uh, let's just say Sam Howell. Maybe he's the best quarterback in college, whatever. He's the North Carolina quarterback. I've seen him ranked high on people's lists, maybe a first-rounder, whatever. You know he's a guy you have to watch. Where do you start, Greg? Like, how many games do you watch? How do you decide which games to watch? When, as soon as you get a guy's name, maybe even start with how do you, where do you go to get the names? Well, let me start this way, Ross, because you kind of th threw out a lot of things there. Um, and there's a lot I could get into here. So let's be very general first. As I've evolved in my career, when I watch the NFL, I am much more conscious of watching now schemes, tactics, as opposed to individual players. Now, individual players will often lead to why a team plays a particular scheme. So you have to be cognizant of that. I'll give you an example. Watching the Rams defense a year ago, uh, which was coordinated by Brandon Staley, now the head coach of the Chargers, they played a lot of zone coverage, but within their zone concepts, they often had Ramsey lock man-to-man -man on an outside receiver, particularly if he was aligned to the boundary side of the field. So that's a case where I'm looking at scheme, but I understand the importance of a particular player and how that particular player impacts a scheme. When it comes to offense, let's say, I'm very much more interested now in looking at route concepts and how teams get to specific route concepts because there's not a thousand route concepts. So it's how you get to what you want to get to. And that's use of personnel. That's use of formation. That's use of shifts, use of motions. These are all things I look at when I watch tape. And this is more true of the NFL. So while I'm very aware of players, I'm not breaking down a, a skill set of Dallas Goddard, let's say, just throwing that out. I'm not necessarily doing that. I'm, I'm looking more at schemes and tactics and, and approach. Uh, when it comes to college players, that's different. College players, I'm more studying the individual. Now, you have to have some awareness of what they're being asked to do as you watch the tape. But I'm looking more for traits, attributes, characteristics of college players because what's the purpose of watching college tape, Ross? The purpose of watching college tape is to transition and project players to the NFL, not to say, wow, he's a good college player. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of really good college players, as you know, who don't make it in the NFL for any number of reasons. So with college players, I'm much more focused on traits, attributes, characteristics, and how I believe they can transition to the league. Now, because I don't work for a team and I'm not necessarily putting them into a specific team's system, I have to think of it more globally. I have to think of it more macro from, you know, from 30,000 feet. So I have to look at a player and say, hey, I think this linebacker, he's a really nice player, but I think that he's not a player whose traits would make him play in a nickel defense, in a sub defense. And therefore, he might not have the same value as another linebacker who's really athletic and can ultimately be on the field in your sub packages. And then you have to decide who has more value in today's NFL. And clearly, the player who can play in sub would have more value because teams play a far, far higher percentage of their defensive snaps in a sub defense, be it nickel or dime. Love it. And uh, as usual, Greg, I, you just let me in about five more questions. Yeah, I know. This we could talk about Ross for three hours. No, this could be, I'm just realizing <laughs> now, yes, this could be like a 10 segment series. Right. <laughs> um, that, that's not going to happen today. So we'll just get to the important ones. And maybe that's what this, maybe this is what we'll do next off season. Who knows? Um, from a college player standpoint though, since we're on that, that's why I asked you about first. Right. What is uh, how do you get your names, and then how do you decide okay. which games to watch of the kid? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, normally at this time of year, there's there's the Todd McShays, the Mel Kuypers, the Daniel Jeremiah's, 
the the guys who do this all year round. Obviously, I can't do college all year round because of the NFL matchup show and my dedicated focus to the NFL from basically mid-August through the end of the Super Bowl. Um, so I, I basically, people I respect who've done this a long time, they, they put out lists. Now, often th those things change, but you have to have a starting point. And that's how I kind of start. So if I see a list by Mel Kuyper or Todd McShay or Daniel Jeremiah and, and you know, they list here are the top five guys at, at defensive end. You know, here are the top five corners. That's how I start. Then when it comes to games, defensive players, you have to watch games, Ross, because you see so much more. You can't just look at a linebacker's tackles. You have to see how he plays in a game because very often, and this is particularly true of defensive linemen, and you well know this, defensive linemen very often don't put up big numbers when it comes to tackles. You know, obviously edge rushers can get sacks, but you, there have been times where I've watched defensive linemen and he might have one tackle in a game, and then I watch all 70 snaps of the game, and he was dominant. So you have to watch games when you watch defensive players, and that takes time. That's particularly true of corners and safeties because you could look at corners and you'll see the stats and it'll say they might have seven pass defense plays the whole year. So you can't just watch those seven plays. You have to watch games. You have to see uh, how are they being asked to play? Do they play press man? What's their press man technique? Do they play mirror match press man? Meaning they allow the receiver to declare his route and then get, get in his hip pocket. Do they play physical press man where they jam him off the ball? How do they play off coverage? What is their pedal like? What is their transition like? How do they change direction? How do they play in zone? How do they use your, their eyes? These are things that require you to watch full games because you can see all this when the ball is not thrown to a receiver on their side. So that's why you have to go through full games for defensive players. How many games do you typically watch, Greg? Probably too many, Ross. I'm a little nuts. You know, quarterbacks, I like to watch a lot of games. Quarterbacks, you know, and I've watched nine quarterbacks already this offseason who will be in next year's draft. Um, I usually watch six or seven uh, games for quarterbacks just because I feel like I have to. And you, normally I pick out games based on opponent, uh, best opponent that they play. Uh, I'll watch their best games and I'll watch their worst games. So it's a combination of opponent, best game, worst game. And I try to get through with quarterbacks six or seven games. Awesome. All right. Now, so here's the thing that's interesting. If I'm evaluating an offensive lineman, college offensive lineman, yeah, um, I will really only watch the end zone copy. So right. just for the listeners, they may not be aware of this. There's really only two copies on the coaching tape. There's the wide view, and then there's the end zone view. The wide view is sort of the all 22 where you can see all 22 guys. Then there's the end zone or the tight copy. If I'm watching an offensive lineman, the wide view provides very little value and is really just a waste of time. And even Greg, and I could do this on an episode here, when I am watching, when I'm prepping for college games, I don't watch a whole lot of wide view because I can see most of what I want to see from the end zone, from the tight copy. And what really matters to me is I, I need to see their numbers. Uh, right. I need to, be able to see their numbers. Yeah. So I might actually do um, two or three games, but only watch two quarters of each of those games because I want to watch when the jersey numbers, when I'm behind the team I'm, exactly. right. I'm going right. to call, right. so I can see those jersey numbers and really start to know those kids well. Yeah, now here's – and and I do not fancy myself, Ross, as an offensive line guru by any stretch. So, uh, you know, you would be way better. And I've spoken to offensive line coaches. You know, do I have a sense? Yes, I do. I've been doing it a long time. But I will in no way say I'm an expert on hand placement or how you have to coordinate your, your hands and your feet or how specific techniques are taught. Um, I've been told I, I'm better at it than I think, but I, I'm not real comfortable oftentimes, you know, with, with the details and nuance. But it, uh, let me answer it this way. I do like to watch the wide copy even – now, that's not good for technique, but I'll tell you why I like that. 
I like that because I like to see what the defense is doing from a pressure standpoint, which you see better from a wide copy, particularly since more and more defenses involve secondary players in the pass rush. And then I try to figure out what the protection is. Because one of the toughest things for me is protection. Now there are base protections. Those are, you know, if it's if it's a four man rush, you know, or even a five man rush, I, I can pretty much figure out the protection, just like I know you can. But if you start getting in, and particularly this is true in the NFL when I we do the NFL matchup show, and you start getting into overload fronts, uh, safeties blitzing coming from distance, uh, the protections sometimes are, are a little challenging to figure out. So I, I like to get a wider sense too of what a particular defensive look overall, how that might impact pass protection. But if you're just looking for individual traits of, a, of an offensive lineman, you definitely want the, the end zone copy. The end zone copy tells you that. So um, the last question on that would be, how many times do you think you watch each play? Like, Let's say you're watching <laughs> a quarterback – Cause that's the other thing people don't realize. Yeah. Like when they're watching a game, they just watch the game and then the next play happens. When you're actually evaluating or studying, you watch the same play over and over again sometimes. Yeah. Or, and that or, depends- or you stop mid play and go back. Yes. It depends on the play. I mean, I look, if I'm evaluating a quarterback and he throws a tunnel screen, I'm not going to watch that play eight times because that doesn't tell me a whole lot. Uh, but if I'm watching a quarterback and it's third and nine and he has more of a drop back and there's some bodies around him and, you know, then I go through that play in detail because I want to see what the route concept is. I want to see, was there a throw that he should have made it within the timing of the, of the structure of the play? Uh, you know, there's so many factors. I want to see what the coverage is, how he's responding to the coverage. So depending on the play, there's no play I really watch once where I just zip through. But depending on the play, I could watch it twice or I could watch it eight or nine times because there's so many elements to a given play. That, that's an issue we've always faced doing the matchup show, Ross, is when we do pieces for the matchup show, ultimately we can only show two at most three elements of a given play, but the play could have 10 or 12 different elements, but we can't show all 12. It's too much. It's too much to break down. But I could go through a play 10, 12 times, depending on on the specific nature of the play. That is the single hardest thing and most important thing I've learned as a game analyst. You really can only pick one. Yeah. And for you, it's different because you only have between a play – even if it's a really important play in the game, you don't have, you know, two and a half minutes to talk about it. You've got 20 seconds at most. So you cannot, even if you see five things, you have to pick out the one thing that you feel was most important to that play. Correct. And I used to try to squeeze two or three in and it's not good. It I had to learn that good. lesson too when I started doing the matchup show on air five years ago. You know, you do a podcast or a radio show, it's a little different. You can go into a little more detail. But when I'm on the matchup show and, you know, I have a 20 second lead into a film piece, I can't make five points. So here's the, the net net, I guess, Greg, getting back to the first thing you said in the start of this interview about in the NFL, you're more conscious of schemes, tactics, as opposed to individual players. You've been doing this for 42 years now, okay? Yeah. Is Do you feel like, after all your experience and all these years, do you feel like coaching is more or less important than you're used to? In other words, the scheme – putting guys in the right places, is it more important or is it more about the personnel? I think I was just really fortunate to be at this unbelievable coaching collective where there were a ton of NFL coaches that I really got to talk to a lot. And of course, coaches always say, oh, it's the players. I've always been a big believer in coaching. Uh, That may well go back uh, to... Uh, when I was able to spend some time with Bill Walsh and for people who read what I wrote when I uh, did a fill in column for Peter King, he was one of the guys that I, I really spent a lot of time with. I'm a big believer in coaching. I think coaching is absolutely critical. Um, I think that 
there's always tweaks to schemes, to tactics. This is what coaches do. Um, they try to do more and more. The question becomes how much can your players handle? Uh, because obviously, let's say if you're talking defense, if one guy makes a mistake, you could give up a 60-yard touchdown. So obviously, it's not what the coaches know and can coach. It's what the players can execute. But I'm a big believer in coaching. And the more I do this, Ross, it's really interesting. And this is what I learned being at this coaching collective with some big-time coaches who were there. The more I know, the less I know. And I think you understand what I mean, because it's it's like I love going to a bookstore. I love going to Barnes and Noble and I love to read. And every time I go in the bookstore, I'm just more aggravated because there's a thousand books I know I'll never read. That's the way I feel with all this stuff. I know more and more and more each year just because I study and study and study and try to talk to as many coaches as possible. And all that tells me is how much I don't know. You know what? Uh I think anybody that gets into the coaching profession or anybody that even is in my role as a game analyst, you realize how much you don't know. Ah, it drives me nuts. I sit here and watch tape in my office, Ross, at NFL Films, and all I'm doing when I'm watching is saying if there was a coach sitting here with me, he'd point out 10 things that I'm not seeing, and I'd be totally aggravated. Yeah, well, and even <laughs> just like – You'd be amazed. Well, you know this, but I think the listeners would be amazed if they watched the offense with the entire offensive coaching staff, the level, the intricacy of detail ah. that every position coach could describe it's, it's, everything each play, like, like the fullback, the tailback, oh, you know, the, the tight end, the footwork. I mean, it's like, you you could watch one play for three hours without question. Have every coach go over what every guy is doing. Wow, Greg, I had a bunch more questions. This is well, cool. you know maybe what? We'll, we'll do another one like this at some point, Ross. Yeah, maybe we'll do it next week. I don't know. This was yeah. fantastic. Thank you so much. Always check out Greg, of course, on social media at Greg Cosell, the NFL film superstar. Great work as always, Greg. Thank you. Thanks, Ross. Incredible breakdown by Greg Cosell, as always. Loved hearing about his process. Loved telling you guys about, dra about DraftKings and about Crocs. It's time to put on your favorite pair of Crocs. I have many. And channel your inner fortune teller because your prediction might just make you uh, $10,000 richer. Look, I got clogs. I got sandals. I got slides. Take your picks of styles that are straight fire and make your feet feel like 10000 bucks. Speaking of, the Crocs Hoops Draft Prediction Challenge is coming. And dare we stay free to play on DraftKings.com a week from today. Make all the right picks and a slice of 10 Gs could be yours. Just enter the game page on draft day and see just how well your pick predictions hold up to the real ones. Visit DraftKings.com slash Crocs on Thursday, July 29th. I'll be telling you about this next week because why would you not do this? You should do this. We hope your future is full of comfort and possibly full of money. Learn more at DraftKings.com slash Crocs. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Tux Takes. Hi there, Ross. Let's start today uh, with the 49ers, where star linebacker Fred Warner signed five-year, $95 million deal. $19 million a year, Bry, to play off the ball linebacker. Good for Fred. He's a stud. He deserves it. It's fascinating, and we talked about this with A.J. Hawk, the disparity in terms of how different franchises value that position. Obviously, the 49ers put a great deal of value in what Fred Warner brings to the table. Happy for Fred. You guys know how I feel. I want every dude to get as much money as possible. And it sounds like Darius Leonard, the linebacker for the Colts, will be up next. Tux takes. 
Meanwhile, Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers reportedly declined an extension from the team that would have made him the highest played, highest, easy for me to say, highest paid player in the NFL. Yeah, not surprising. Packers trying to sort of give him a financial apology, if you will. If you saw my article this week, Brian, I know you did. Hopefully the listeners did as well. I wrote my first story for DK Nation. It's up on Twitter, up on Facebook, at Ross Tucker NFL. Aaron Rodgers is playing for the Packers this year. Now, I, I get it. Maybe he didn't want this new contract because it once again gave the Packers the power to determine his future and to determine the timeline. As Andrew has said multiple times, Aaron Rodgers wants more control over his timeline. And listen, I get it. Aaron, I'm with you. I got it. So he turned it down. By the way, he's already almost the highest paid player. What are there, like three guys more than him? Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott? Who cares? What a stupid story that nobody cares about. That's not what it's about. It's about control of his timeline and his future. We have been telling you that for weeks on the Raw Sucker Football Podcast. Tux takes. Some sad news out of New York. Jets passing game coordinator Greg Knapp passed away at the age of 58 after a bike accident. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Bri, because I've been talking about biking a lot this offseason. I've been biking a lot, and I've been using my Raycon earbuds, which you should all use because they're awesome. But this has really given me some some hesitation because I don't own a bike helmet yet. I need to buy one. And I have no idea what happened with Greg. It sounds like he got hit by a vehicle while he was riding his bike. I've spoken with Greg Knapp multiple times. By all accounts, an awesome guy. By my interactions with him, an awesome guy. Three daughters. So this hits close to home on multiple levels. This hurts my heart on multiple levels. Prayers go out to Greg and his entire family. And look, I I haven't paid that much attention, Brian, but I think Mark Eaton, Sean Bradley, I feel like there's been a lot of bicycle accidents recently, and I'm not exactly sure why. So everybody, whether you're the driver or riding a bike, please be safe. Tux takes. And lastly, Chief signed vet uh, defensive end Alex Okafor, one year deal. And both Geno Atkins and Kwan Short both reportedly healthy and ready to go. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who signs Atkins and Kwan Short. You know, both those guys, Brian, made a lot of money. So it's always interesting to see exactly how much they're willing to play for later on in their careers. Gino obviously has been around longer than short, but they both made a lot of money. So I'm curious to see exactly how much they're willing to sign for. Okafor is a guy, uh, played for the Saints, been around, gets the one-year deal with the Chiefs. Speaking of one-year deal, this isn't going to be a one-year deal, but you should at least still be aware of it. That is this Casino Summer Legend Series with a shot at a share of $5 million in total prizes from my dudes over at DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Casino app. Casino. You might have the Sportsbook app. You might have the Fantasy app. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and use promo code Ross to get a shot at your share of $5 million in total prizes when entering DraftKings Casino Legends Series. That's promo code Ross to earn a shot at a share of $5 million in total prizes only on DraftKings Casino. Shoutouts are in order, Bri, always. Today, they are in order for Pizza Boy Brewing, Sport and Culture, Vision Comics with an X, HumanHeadNYC.com. We had a really good week. Hopefully you guys have checked out the other shows. If you haven't, you should. They're terrific. I mean, Jeremy Chin and Kyle Juszczyk 
One other show in the galaxy had two stud, all-pro caliber players on their show this week, the week before training camp. Hint, none. What about the fact that we always have Greg Cosell? And I thought Drew Dinsick was great on Even Money. I thought Dave Richard was awesome on Fantasy Feast. Check him out. Subscribe, please. Already have an unbelievable guest lined up for Monday morning. Have a terrific weekend, everybody. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mention DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, one 800 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.